Hello, it's Tuesday, it is Reviews Day Tuesday, and today I am going to review Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. The play, which I saw on Sunday, the 6th of November, and also a little bit the script, which I read when it was first released a few months ago, and also I reread it yesterday, when the play was still fresh in my mind. First, a note about spoilers. As usual with my reviews, I'm going to try and avoid spoilers as much as possible, mainly through just being frustratingly vague. If I do mention anything which is a bit spoilery, or just that I feel would be best experienced as a surprise in the theatre, I will highlight it so that you can skip it if you would like to. So you should be okay, but if you are going to see the show or you are hoping to see the show and you want to experience it fresh with no prior knowledge, then maybe don't watch this video. So, review. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is currently on at the Palace Theatre in London. The show is in two parts. Part one is two hours, 40 minutes with a 20 minute interval. Part two is five minutes shorter. It begins 19 years after the events of Deathly Hallows. In fact, it begins in the epilogue of Deathly Hallows. Harry and Ginny with their daughter Lily are seeing off their sons, James and Albus to Hogwarts. It's Albus's first year. They're on platform nine and three quarters. Ron and Hermione are also seeing off their daughter Rose for her first year. And Draco Malfoy is also there with his wife Astoria and they are seeing off their son Scorpius for his first year. Albus and Scorpius meet on the train and the two become friends. And then, slight spoiler here, so skip ahead by five seconds if you want to miss it, Albus is sorted into Slytherin. End of spoiler. So we cover their first three years at Hogwarts pretty quickly. It's really well done how they do this and most of the action takes place in Albus and Scorpius's fourth year. I think. The play is concerned with their friendship, they want to prove themselves, Albus especially, so events occur. And the play is also about the relationship between fathers and sons. Um, Harry and Albus's especially, their relationship is quite strained, and Draco and Scorpius's also. And that's about as far as I'm going to go with the plot. So firstly, I love this play. It's very spectacular, it's long, but it doesn't feel it. Your mind doesn't wander, or mine didn't anyway. And this is kind of an annoying word to use, but it's magical. There are a lot of illusions, a lot of really impressive stuff where you're like, how did they do that? It's a very entertaining show to watch, and I feel like a lot of its success is due to that, how well the show is brought to life on stage. I love the scene changes. The scene changes are part of the show. I really like how they conveyed changes in time and place. It's also a show that works extremely well with an audience, an invested, interested audience who know about the world of Harry Potter. There are a lot of oohs and ahs at significant revelations, which I loved. Also, the theatre kind of becomes part of the world of the show, which I enjoyed. You'll know what I mean if you've read the script, also if you've seen the show. And it's funny because when I read the script, I had some issues with the plot. I felt like there were characters acting in ways which felt out of character. A few plot leaps, a few clunky bits in dialogue, odd choices, stuff like that. But I am so happy that when watching it on stage, all of that stuff kind of floated away. Some of it is down to being immersed in the experience of watching that world come to life on stage, but so much of its success has to go to the cast, who were so believable as their characters. They made their actions understandable, they made the dialogue sound real. I mean, it sounds obvious that a play is better staged than read, but I feel like this show is an extremely good example of a script coming to life on stage. It's an amazing job, cast. Especially Jamie Parker as Harry, who I was a fan of before. Paul Thornley as Ron. I didn't see Noma Dumaswani as Hermione, but I'm pretty certain that she would be amazing, because... I've seen her in stuff before and she was amazing. But Nicola Alexis was great as Hermione. Alex Price as Draco. I really liked where Draco went in this play. And especially, I think that's my second especially, so I guess we're at especially squared. Sam Clement as Albus and Anthony Boyle as Scorpius. Because a lot of the weight of the show is on them specifically. Also, a note about Scorpius. When reading the play, he was my favourite character by far. And when seeing the play, even more so. Boyle was so good and how he said every line was a surprise. I mean, Scorpius is now one of my favourite Harry Potter characters, which is a surprise considering how long ago the books were out. It goes Fred and George, Scorpius, Ginny, Luna. I mean, you know what I'm like about fictional characters, so, you know, this is a big week for me. So yeah, I enjoyed this play a lot. If you have seen it, I would love to know what you thought of it. Also, if you read the script as well, do you feel as I do? Or are you just thinking, what has she been rabbiting on about? Oh, also, if you have read the script and are planning on seeing the show, or you are planning on seeing the show and are thinking of reading the script, then I would recommend not reading the script immediately before seeing the show. Leave a bit of a gap. Because I left a bit of a gap and I had forgotten sufficient amounts of the plot to still be surprised by the show, which I think is best. If you want to see the show and can't, then I'm sorry, that's really rubbish. The story works so well on the stage. 
but annoyingly the stage is the place where the least people can see it. I mean even if you're in London it's not particularly helpful because they sold out so quickly. Hopefully the show will come to other places where more people can see it. I think that's the plan. I have to say I don't think the story would work very well as a novel or as a film. Things which are amazing and exciting and dramatic on stage are not so much in text form or on screen. Also I'm going to delve into mild spoilers again so if you want to avoid them go to this time code. The play revisits scenes from the past through dreams and other ways so portraying them in a novel or film would be tricky because they've already been in this form. It would be repetitive, um, confusing, a, a bit difficult to orchestrate I imagine. It works better as it's a different medium. One thing I would be a massive fan of though is them going down the filmed theatre route. There's a lot of debate around it but it's very popular at the minute. The National Theatre does it, The Globe does it, Billy Elliot did it. I think Billy Elliot is a fantastic example of a big long-running show being filmed successfully. It can't recreate the experience but it does give a better idea of the experience and of the story than the script does. So I would love it if that happened and I would especially love it if it happened when the original cast is still there. Because they're amazing and a lot of the show's success in years to come is going to be down to the choices that they have made in the show now. Just my thought and I don't know much about these things but that would be the dream. I'm getting distracted. I will give Harry Potter and the Cursed Child the play 4.7 out of 5. I'll give the play script slightly less than that because although it is excellent to have access to the story if you can't see it on stage it's just not as good here, which is inconvenient and also not the best note to end on, Mouse. The play was great. I really enjoyed it. It's wonderful to be back in the wizarding world. Scorpius is awesome. Isn't it fantastic that after all these years we're still talking about Harry Potter? I think that's where I should end. I hope you have a fantastic couple of days and I will see you later on in the week.